or whatever. Or whatever. I think public sector, one of the things I'd like to see um, happen is something similar to, uh, I think it's the British Arts Council, the Canada Council in, in Canada, whatever the equivalent would be in the States or wherever. Just a, a body that is there that gets a certain amount of money that is then uh, distributed to artists in a country who write in and submit proposals. And this is the arts across the board. Um, whether the money is great or small, whether it's what people can afford or not. Um, I think it's a, a question of art comes at a, at a cost, not at a loss. So people understand that whatever money is put into this council is understood as for the benefit of the country. I would like to see some sort of council set up where this money is not, not a funding or a funding um, situation that comes every now and then where we had a cultural action fund that was great. Um, I benefited from it, or, or my co company benefited from it. But we need something that's that's ongoing, that is not just here today, maybe gone in a few years' time. All right. We also have a situation with um, where we have another major fund. Uh, I think it's a sports and culture fund, or something like that. And again, that's great. It's ongoing, but it seems to me as if every now and then you hear, well, we're not too sure if they're accepting applications anymore, or if it's there's a, a freeze on it. That's not the type of funding I'm talking about. I'm talking about a council that runs, that gets a budget. Even if the budget is cut every now and then, it is still getting regular annual funding and artists are able to submit monies. That's public sector. I think, um, I think there's tremendous support from the public sector in terms of the National Culture Foundation and other groupings. They are they're doing what they can do. In Vest Barbados, they're, whatever their mandate is, they're trying very hard to support artists. I think public sector now, artists have to continue to support each other and create their own industries. Um, you mentioned what you're doing, what the Beijing Reporter is doing. I think it's a question of more people looking to see what they can do, and then, again, using your own institution or your own um, business as an example, extending, saying, look, this is what I'm doing, um, I have space, uh, we can arrange some sort of trade or an arrangement here where you benefit and I benefit. Mm -hmm. I'd like to see more artists doing that, reaching out to each other in, a, in an entrepreneurial spirit as opposed to, well, come participate in my show or come help me do this and then afterwards you're not really in touch anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, if we don't have certain industries, it's because we haven't really put enough into building them and maintaining them. So I'm thinking, I'm seeing more of that. I think that buzzword you're talking about is, is because we're seeing more of that activity. But my fear is that we see that activity, and you, if you talk to people who've been here for a while, they say the same thing. Everybody gets excited, they come to meetings. After that, you don't see them, or the, the group falls apart. I don't want that to happen. There's a lot happening here, and I felt very good being able to, to say, Ian, you know, would you carry you know, my guest blog? He said, sure. Sure, you know, and, and, and then you would remind me too, you know, when you came in, are you tweeting? Are you letting people know what you're doing? We need to do that with each other. And I would check in with you and say, Ian, how's an novel coming along? You know, what's going on with that? I, I want to see, you know, I want to see more of that. Is that support, but also there's a business aspect to it. Because when I get that exposure through your site, uh, I am hoping that that will also help you, but I know it also helps me in terms of sales, you know, yeah. people being aware of my product, uh, and it encourages me then to do more of this sort of thing. To go yeah, but there. what about the private sector, though? You're talking about between... I'm, you know, I'm talking about the private sector between artists. Now, the mm -hmm. private sector itself, I think that they need to come on. We don't have a real um, philanthropic spirit, I think, in Barbados. And I think part of the belief was, well, we, we don't really have people who are like, Kennedys and Rockefellers. And I say bollocks to that. I think, you know, we have people who do have money, um, whether we talk about the obvious, like the Simpsons and the Williams, and they have made their contributions. They don't always make them public. As far as I understand, they have and people even I know people who benefited. But I think they could step out. Companies, big companies, could come out more and say, look, we are going to make a serious contribution to the arts. And this is what it is. It could be an endowment. You know, it, it, it could be a greater partnership in other areas of the arts. Crop over is nice, you know, but it can't be everything. It, it was not meant to be everything. There are other areas of the arts, we talk about cultural industries, where I think the private sector can come in and benefit in terms of building brands. If you're talking about a movie industry, and people are doing films and everything like that, 
well, the private sector should come in and say, look, we need to have our male gay flashed when you do whatever you're doing. So that's why I'm saying we have to get our act together privately as part of private sector as artists. So they can come in with confidence and say, I see your products, I see what you're doing. You know, I see your website, I see, you know, I want to be able to put my brand there and continue to have that there for the next so many, so many months. But it has to work in tandem. We have to get our side right so they can get their side right. But they have to be serious. And I wanted to have a place where people could go to find my erotica, my erotic fiction. Mm -hmm. People know about the erotic comics. Mm -hmm. There are people who don't know, and this is part of a longer story, people who don't know about the prose stories, and they, the comics are based on the prose stories, I've adapted them. And with anthologies coming out, uh, saying, well, this is definitive, or if you want Caribbean anthologies uh, in erotica. And I'm looking at these anthologies, and they're fine, but I'm also saying, I didn't know they were coming out to even review them. I didn't know they were coming out. No one contacted me in terms of editors. And I said, well, they can't contact you. They don't know about your stuff. So a friend suggested, well, why don't you put in an anthology of your, your erotica? I said, well, I thought about doing that, but I was going to wait until my mother sort of passed on. <laughs> she looked at me kind of like, why? And I said, I didn't have a reason. I just, you're yeah. right. You're right. Because my mother long ago made the distinction between that work, mm -hmm. the erotica, and that's fine, you do that, I don't need to read that. And my other work, which I quite like, Robert, and I'll read that. Yeah. So it wasn't an issue for my mother, the issue was with me. Yeah. So then I just started to put things in motion, and I want to get the stories. There is a volume out there, mm -hmm. produced by People Tree, Opal Palmer Adisa, she produced it with another editor, so it was co-edited. There is, there is material. Uh, I don't know how much there is, uh, per se, but they managed to produce a volume. I know I do what I do. Naila Falami Moja, she also writes erotica and has published it. There are writers out there, but I think that's the problem. That's why I want to put together this volume. There are only 200 copies in existence. I wanted to just do something that was tight and short, and then at some point there'll be a digital version to it. Um, but I do believe there's material, but nobody knows really something. I'd have to, again, check and see what's already available. But the last time we spoke, which was about um, almost a year ago now, he was explaining to me that the books are on com comicsology. So you can go there and whatever formats are available. And he was very conscious of the current formats and tablet size and everything. He was saying if you're producing anything new and working with an artist locally, please make sure that they're conscious of what is happening in, in the industry and in technology. So I think some of the formats may already conform to what you're talking about from Comixology. Um, beyond that, I would just say, yes, whatever I can do to make it more accessible to people, 